continental divide, life's continental divide, puts Guam. Fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. The continental divide is an imaginary line that snakes its way all over Montana down to New Mexico along the ridge of the Rocky Mountains. The Great Divide, as it's known, separates waters that drain easterly into the Atlantic from those that flow westerly into the Pacific. And for the early settlers heading out west, it was the halfway point of their trek. It was all downhill from there. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people also look at life's halfway point with that same trepidation, especially those who haven't reached it yet. They think it's all downhill from there. Well, let me tell you, from someone who's actually standing at the top of that crest, you've got one hell of a view up here. So how do you know whether you've reached that halfway point in life? Well, you could be very scientific and use life expectancy tables. And I did that, and I found out to my dismay that I reached that halfway point two years ago, February 2004, <laughs> when my age, 39.7, equaled my life expectancy, 39.7. But then I also realized that life expectancy is somewhat of a fuzzy concept. And you can really push out that day of reckoning with healthy eating, regular exercise, and if you live in France, lots and lots of red wine. <laughs> so spending time at that midway point is more like hiking along a mountain range rather than climbing a single peak. But there are other signs. For me, for example, I noticed recently that I do this every time I sit down. That's right. I hold my breath when I sit down. But once I'm fully planned out, I let out a sigh as if I've just finished Thanksgiving dinner. So now, when I'm in the presence of others, I try to suppress that sigh, which my wife, in her loving ways, has told me it makes me sound like an old man, and which apparently I've been doing for over a year. <laughs> but I'd like to think that it's also, you know, the whole relaxation and exhale is a bit of a zen moment of relaxation, so I might actually keep doing it. But I like to think that the real indication of whether you've reached your physical high point is when your children can outlast you. Let me give you an example. Last weekend I was skiing with my 11-year-old son Alexander. And he was the first one to say, Dad, I'm tired, I want to take a break, let's go to the lodge, warm up. And I said, Dad, Alex, what are you doing? It's only 9.30 in the morning. I was ready to go and keep going to the mountain and make the most of my day, and he was already tired. So I can't wait for that day when he's at the same energy level that I am, and we can both shoot down the mountain at breakneck speed, and we're going to enjoy those few years until I'm the one who says, you know, Alex, keep going, I'm going to take a break and get a drink at the lodge. <laughs> Another sign for me was the kind of comments I make. Recently I was in Arizona with my wife visiting my parents, and we were driving along the street in Scottsdale, which is where I grew up in high school, and during that time there was nothing there, just a few cactuses, ocotillo trees, a few shrubs for some lizards to hide under. It was desert. This time, we were driving past strip mall, after urban development, after mini mall, and I kept saying, well, this wasn't here when I was around, or this inter intersection didn't even exist when I was here. And then it occurred to me, oh my god, I sound like my parents. Or worse, I sound like my parents' parents, the ones who start every conversation with, well, when I was young, or back in my day. So now i got to watch what I say, too. Now every year, there are quite a few people who actually decide to spend the whole summer trekking along the entire 3,000 mile Continental Divide Trail. And you've got to be in pretty good shape, but you also have to pack pretty light to enable you to hike 17 miles a day for five months straight. And I find with life it's a bit like that too. The older I get, the less stuff I think I need. And maybe that's another indication of a halfway point. The first half of life is all about accumulating stuff and material possessions. And the second <coughs> half is more about enjoying them or actually giving them away. And so the less I need, the more I can focus on things that really matter. Love, learning, experiences, friendships. And so sometimes I find myself in the checkout aisle of a, of a store with a whole bunch of stuff in my hand, debating, do I really need this, do I need that? And guess what, more often than not, I actually walk out of the store empty-handed. And when you stand on top of that continental divide, you can see as far ahead as you can see back. And Standing at life's halfway point gives you an equally impressive perspective, but on time. Maybe because you've got just as much time ahead of you as there is behind you. So I find that I use my time much more judiciously these days. I've, when I've got a choice of activities, I usually ask myself, does it make a difference? I choose activities that leave some sort of legacy, like writing, photography, or 
volunteering or being with friends rather than passive entertainment like watching a ball game or going to the movies. So I'm much more of a spectator in life. I mean, a participant in life rather than a spectator, and it feels great. So just as the continental divide is a line that's imaginary, so is the notion of an apex in life, because our intellectual, physical, and emotional peaks don't really neatly coincide, which is kind of reassuring, because that means there's always one more peak that you can look forward to. Kind of like when you're in Colorado and you've crossed Hell Roaring Creek, and you've climbed up Nemesis Mountain, and you stand on top of the ridge, and you look out, and there's yet another mountain range in the distance with even more sites that await you beyond that. So as you're approaching that point, you know, don't dread it. Look forward to it. And when you're there, enjoy it, whether you think it's happening at 30, at 40, or at 50. The early settlers took months to cross the Rocky Mountains. And during that time, they got to enjoy the smell of sage after a rain the towering spires and the glacial lakes at dawn, or a sea of yellow prairie flowers. And li crossing life's continental divide probably takes years, time during which you can also enjoy its memorable facets, watching your children grow up and surpass you, learning how to use your time wisely, and getting the gaining the wisdom of really knowing what truly matters.